We are back. Joining me now is Leah Gunn Barrett, Executive Director of New Yorkers Against Gun Violence, Joe Coninson, Editor in Chief of the National Memo, and Shannon Watts, founder of Moms Demand Action. Shannon, tell me about Moms Demand Action and the kind of growth you've seen and what the fallout from this incident has been. After the Sandy Hook shooting in December, I was looking for a Mothers Against Drunk Driving of Gun Reform and couldn't find it online. And it, it was amazing how much it grew so quickly. Here we are just a year later. We have over 100,000 members. We have a chapter in every single state. Um, and we are a powerful force to be reckoned with. We are um, attacking this issue at all levels, Congress, state legislatures, American businesses. And you know what you saw in Dallas is really a microcosm of what we face all over the country all the time. Uh, it's very rare that we don't have a rally and that we are surrounded by armed uh, open carry activists. And you know I would disagree with Corey Watkins. I do not think an armed society is a polite society. I think it's a dangerous society. And our statistics bear that out. There are 30,000 uh, victims of gun violence in this country every year. And I think that now that moms are involved, uh, we are going to change this and we are going to fix this problem in America. Uh, Leah, if you look at the traction on this issue, and I know you've, you've worked on this for, for some time, um, there was a kind of high watermark in the 90s under Clinton, the assault weapon ban. You had, I remember as a young political reporter covering races in which the Democratic candidate was leading with ads just about gun safety and winning in suburban Chicago districts, for instance. And then it just dropped off the table. And it dropped off the table in a way, I think, institutionally, right? I mean, was there a period where, like, it was hard to raise money, it was hard to get volunteers, it was hard to get speakers at conferences? Yeah, you? it was a very dispiriting time. Uh, remember George W. Bush said he had the NRA working out of his office when he was selected by the Supreme Court back in 2000. And I was working in Maryland at the time. A lot of my friends were in D.C. We got with uh, gun uh, safety groups. And they found it very dispiriting. It was hard to get anything done with, with a Republican president. We, at the time, had a Republican governor in Maryland. It was a very grim time, but you know what we did? We fell apart as a movement, not that the movement was very nascent. It hadn't really developed as the way it, it, it probably should have if we were going to emulate Mothers Against Drunk Driving right. and try to really create a grassroots movement for social change. So we went AWOL. We really did as a movement. And the NRA had the feel to themselves. You can look at a map. In 1981, none of the states had stand your ground laws. Today, 26 right. do. In 1980, none, no states had uh, concealed carry laws. Today, every single state has a concealed carry law. So the, the battleground is the states, and Shannon is right. Um, there's a grassroots movement growing and brewing, and the more extreme that side becomes, and we saw it in Dallas, then I think the more energized uh, we become. That's that's part of it. I think there's two factors, Joe, as someone who's covered the politics of this. There's just the horror of the tragedies we've seen uh, right. over and over and over. But there's also the fact that, in some ways, the, the, the people on the other side of this issue have to keep winning things, and the more they win, the more extreme they get, because there's nothing left to win, but the most maximalist things like open carry in the Capitol around a bunch of politicians. Right. Well, you see, that's the extremism that is uh, burgeoning on the right now. It's not just in the Tea Party. It's certainly been in the gun movement for a long time, uh, the gun rights movement, as they call themselves. What's interesting to me, if you look back at the history of the 94 law, the reason that Clinton succeeded in getting that law passed, flawed as it was, was that he managed to put himself on the side of law enforcement right. against the extremism of the gun lobby. He managed to gather cops around him as symbols of, a, of a security and a right. safe society, order, all the sort of themes that the right and conservatives had appropriated for so long. Uh, now, th these gun rights guys are the symbols of disorder. That is disorder, and they're they're, atta videos, they're right. attacking they're attacking cops. I mean, this is they're going up to the Capitol and getting in the face of the state police. That is disorder, and, and that ought to be a theme that is emphasized. Shannon, the, the, the national story, I think, here was Sandy Hook was this kind of breaking point. The president made the speech. There was a push at the national level, which we haven't seen in years, and then it failed. And so the Sisyphus tried to roll the rock up the hill. It rolled back down. It crushed him. Okay, we all go back to our other issues. What does that version of events miss? It misses that the legislators that we had the day after Sandy Hook were the same legislators we had the day before. And while we wish this tragedy would have changed their hearts and minds, it clearly didn't. And so we're going to have to wait to the midterms and elections beyond to get the right Congress in place to do the right thing. I think that Congress will be filled with moms and women, and they will do the right thing. 
But in the meantime, this is about grassroots. This is about going after municipalities and states and making sure that they do the right thing. We've had huge wins in Colorado, Connecticut, Delaware, Maryland, New York. We had smaller wins in California and New Jersey. We were able to block bad legislation in the state of Missouri. We are winning this. We are rolling huh. it back, and it will happen. So, Leo, compare that period where things were more abundant to now. What's the biggest difference? Well, I think the biggest difference is more people are dying from guns because they're more pervasive, and the uh, gun lobby has become even more extreme. They really have backed themselves into some kind of horrible corner, and I think most Americans are, are sensible and probably absolutely horrified um, by the actions of these uh, thugs in Dallas. There's no other word for them. They're terrorists. And, you know, I had a correspondence with a gun owner in New upstate New York who said, you know, he doesn't believe that you need to have an assault rifle with 30 rounds to go hunting. If you, if you need that, then you need to practice right. your Target shooting. Are the Democrats coming around on the politics of this? I think it'll be tough for them in this in this cycle, Chris, yeah. because they're they're already feel endangered now because of Obamacare, and then the rollout of the health care uh, website has been a disaster for them. At least that's how they feel. So taking further risks on guns is not what the they're only thing do. that will make them do that is pressure from below. That's Leah Gun Barrett right. from New Yorkers Against Gun Violence, Joe Connison from the National Memo, and Shannon Watts from Moms Demand Action for Gun Sense in America. Thank you all. That is all in for this evening. The Rachel Maddow Show starts right now. Good evening, Rachel. Good evening, Chris. Thanks, my friend.